everyone, welcome back to Survivor Live. We are sitting here with fan favorite, Spencer, Final Four. How are you feeling? Finale is over, it's all yeah. over. What's going on? I'm feeling good. Uh, it's definitely like a mixed bag of emotions. I'm kind of sad that it's over. I'm kind of relieved that I get closure on this whole thing. It's been like a year and it's it's been such a distraction that it's cool to get closure. And I'm really pleasantly surprised with, I, I don't know that I'm fan favorite necessarily. People but I love you, are you kidding? I'm, the fans I'm, are going crazy for you. I'm really pleasantly surprised with, with that, yeah. Good. I think you should be. I think your parents are really proud of you. Jeff Probst has pretty much assumed you has, as his son. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Do you yeah. have the letter with you? Not on me. No, no. I want you to no, read it. No, trust me. If this were real life, like after this, I'm going to have it on me 24-7. I'm going to like, <laughs> it's going to be in my pocket. I'm going to be anyone, you know, if, if I ever need to, to talk about pros, I'm going to be like, he wrote me a letter. It's, I'm, it's going to be one of my prized like, possessions. The fans are going to want to know. They're going to be really sad that you didn't read your letter on Survivor Live because they've I didn't been following time. you the whole time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wish I had known. I would have brought it. Who has it? Where is it? I put it in my bag. I'll, you know I'll, that's stolen by now. Probably Tony stole it. He probably. Oh, I wouldn't put it past him. That guy's a con man. What a lunatic. It's, Lunatic, maniac, <laughs> a good maniac. Obviously, you saw my speech. I love Tony, I, but you gave a very impassioned speech for him. Yeah, well, I think I, you probably swayed a lot of, of votes. With yeah, that speech. with that speech, I, I was. It, it mattered to me that the right person won, and I, I felt like Tony was the right person to win. Mm -hmm. That said, um, I do. You know, I, Wu played a great game, and what I said about Wu, I think you know his decision to take. Tony to the end doesn't speak well for him as a player, um, but it speaks really well to him as a person. Um, and I love Wu, and I consider him a friend now. Yeah, he um, didn't. He wanted to be the same guy as he is in real life. Yeah, as he was. Well, in the but game. hey, you've been saying I've been watching Survivor Live, obviously, and you've been saying that you wanted this to happen. You wanted someone to finally not take the goat to the end, right? I did want that yeah, actually. So yeah, when, I when talked you, to Rob. When, when Wu did it, were you like, "Go Wu"? <laughs> I well, I really wanted you to be in the end, and I envisioned uh, a final three with uh -huh. you and Tony and Cass. Yeah. Because I wanted to hear Cass's speech to the jury, and I thought like, because <laughs> people were going to brutalize her, right? And I wanted right. her to Honestly, be like, articulate. Honestly, Cass, and smart. I think Cass should counter blessings because she got voted out right before she saved herself. You know, the jury going off on her. I at, now I don't know what I would have said, but at, at the time I, I wouldn't be surprised if I would have just gone off. Um, On Cass? Oh, yeah. I was, so why uh, do you not like Cass so much? Because she s seems to have a block up against why people don't like her. Yeah, I think it's just like Part of it was game related. Part of it was me being bitter and her, you know, making her move. But it, it, if she, if the move had made sense, it would have been easy for me to forgive it. Yeah. But I felt like it didn't make sense. So you don't get her logic that she was on the bottom yeah. and she flipped well, to be she on the bottom. She wasn't on the bottom. I mean, I, I had sure I had other deals going, but I also had a deal with Tasha and Cass that I wanted to go to the final three with them and. Honest God, like God's honest truth, I wanted to go to the end with Cass. So she wasn't on the bottom in my book. Why did you want to go to the end with Cass? Because I thought I could beat her. Uh, I think that, you know, part of why she wasn't so liked by the jury, it's not just, you know, a move she made. Uh, it's It was, you know, really more than that. It was just living with her. And not to say that she's just a horrible person, but she's the kind of person that the circumstances... Uh, not to say that. Not yeah. to say that. Not to it, say that. To, what I'm saying is that she's the kind of person that the circumstances grade on you, and some of her worst sides come out. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that had more to do with her being disliked than you know any moves she made. And you, go ahead. You had a pretty tough go at the beginning of the game with I your had a pretty, brain yeah, tribe. Yeah. I mean, you had some real. Very uh, interesting characters, mm -hmm. I would say, including Cass and yeah. Tia, who yeah. dumped your food supply yep. very early on. What was going through your mind? You were like, this is your dream to go on Survivor. It's been your dream forever. Like, how long yeah. have you been watching the show? Like five years. Yeah. For five years. Yeah. And, okay. and I, w I made up for lost time. I went back. I've watched every season. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did your time to do that? Hey, and by the way, <laughs> I, you know, I always was, am so jealous of families who watch Survivor. And I tried so hard to get my family into it. And I didn't really succeed. But the one season I got them to watch was Micronesia. Oh, so they love you. All right. Yeah. Cool. I but like yeah, that. no, being on that Point tribe. For me. <laughs> yeah. Being on that tribe, um, awesome casting for that tribe. Terrible players. Um, that was such a disaster. What were you thinking? You're like, this is what I wanted. Is it be careful what you wish for? <laughs> Definitely kind of be thing? careful what you wish for. When it was day seven and it was raining and Jeffra was saying it was a survivor nightmare, it was for me too. <laughs> yeah. You know, Garrett just got voted out. I was sad. 
Um, and that was your boy, huh? Yeah, he was my boy. Um, and yeah, that was tough. And, and more than that, just like I was in such a bad position. I thought I was next to go. I was going to be pre-jury, which would have been just crushing as a fan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely some moments where I thought, you know, what did I get into? But it, you know, it was a roller coaster. And there were also moments where it was the, some of the best times I've had in my life. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's so what's so wild about Survivor. Mm -hmm. And I think Jeff said it really well when he said as soon as you became the underdog and you started <laughs> fighting and yeah. you started showing people that you weren't going to give up, that mm -hmm. you were in it and no matter what the circumstances or how beaten down you got, yeah. you were going to play. Right. That's what I think got the fan support. That's what got my support. That's what yeah. got Jeff's support. Yeah. And, you know? I'm honestly like it couldn't have worked out better for me from the point of view of people rooting for me. If I had been in power, you know, who knows what would have happened. I'm, I thought I didn't think you would have been as likable of a person. I probably I wouldn't show have. I wouldn't if have. If you would yeah. have been. A, I mean, in you, power. you have to like an underdog, and so I think that was really valuable that I got to play Survivor from that perspective and see, you know, that difference because that's not something I was really attuned to going in. Mm -hmm. I had all these ideas of being in Machiavelli and playing a huge strategic game, and I never got to do that and. Who knows? Maybe for the best. Maybe for the best. Yeah, maybe for the now best. now everyone's in love with you. And Tyler Perry is probably going to cast you in his next movie. <laughs> <laughs> did, how hard did you look for that Tyler Perry idol? Pretty hard. Not hard enough. Like, I looked pretty hard. And, you know, whenever I had some free time when I felt like people wouldn't be judging me, I would go look. Tony, he didn't care about people judging him. He was just looking. He would be gone for hours, and he would just look. And I think, honestly, in retrospect, that's the right approach. You look for idols. Jeff so the said next it. time you go play a survivor, you're going to play like Tony? Wow. The no sleep, wow. the manipulation, the bulldozing, the First swearing all, on your dead no, father. No. I'm in <laughs> no way, shape, or form capable of playing like Tony. That guy is one of a kind. He, yeah. He's made for TV, made for this show. Can't play like Tony. But there are things from Tony's game that I think would be really helpful additions for mine. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, those great instincts he has, the life experience he has, the skills with people. You know, Tony... You know, he, he might not have liked everyone he was working with, but he made sure to interact with them well. And he was so good. He was emotional, an emotional player, but he was really good at knowing the face he needed to put on and putting it on. Mm -hmm. And that's how you saw him really, like, betray his alliance and then have them come right back to him because he was so convincing. And yeah. so that ability with people, I think, would be probably the most helpful attribute I could get. Can you learn that? Yeah. I think it comes down to a lot of life experience, and I think you definitely can get more life experience. Um, okay. So, can I learn it to the degree he has it? Probably not. But really suck him in. To yeah. Your web. But I can get better at it. I mean, that's an aspect of the game: the people skills, the uh, you know, the uh, interpersonal, making people trust you, sharing with people, developing mm -hmm. really solid connections. That's, I think, something I can get better at. Maybe not great at, but better. So, what have you learned about yourself? <laughs> playing Survivor? I would say top of the list is I have a lot more of a capacity for emotion than I thought. I went what in... What emotion? We like never see you. You never, you didn't crack a tear? Well, when not that you saw. When your sister showed up? Not that you saw, yeah. Oh, no, okay. I, so you would go behind a tree and cry where the cameras couldn't find you? I yeah. did that too. I, I actually <laughs> did that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I it was... As, as weird as it might sound, because, yeah, my I wasn't shown as emotional, but as weird as it might sound, I was expecting it to be physically hard. It was so emotionally hard for me, way more than I thought, and I definitely had some emotional moments. It was it showed me, you know, feelings within me that I had never really considered, because it's such a weird circumstance. Like, nothing else other than Survivor is going to pull that out of you. Um, and even watching it back tonight, it's, it's really emotional. And I sure. think that's something that, you know, now that I've had this experience, I'm still not, you know, super emotional, but I'm more aware of my emotions. And I think, you know, the emotional intelligence, which might have been at like zero before, is now maybe okay. Yeah, because why was Jeff saying, I mean, to me, you seem very relaxed, you're mm -hmm. very present, you're likable, you're humble, uh -huh. you seem to know yourself pretty well. Why did Jeff, why was he so anti Spencer in the beginning? Like, what was We had some that fights about? in casting. We had some fights in casting. Okay. We, uh, Jeff, you know, like, we, I like to go at it with him because he's easy to rile up. Sure. So, like, it's, it was kind of entertainment for me, just like getting him upset. So and what, what makes Jeff upset? What would you say? The one big thing that made him upset is before the game, he likes to come and give a big speech to everyone and say, okay, this is going to be a great season. 
Jason, you have to play cutthroat. And one of the things he said was he tried to go into my playbook and talk about econ, economics. Uh -huh. And he tried to say that Survivor is the same thing as Prisoner's Dilemma. He said it's this pro it's this thing from game theory and economics where, okay. where Jeff's like, Survivor is Prisoner's Dilemma. You have to turn on people. You have to always cut their throats. And so when I went to meet with Jeff, I was like, Jeff, that is the worst analogy I've ever heard. <laughs> worst analogy. Like, I'm glad you know a little bit of econ, but there are times when you aren't screwing people over. It's not that black and white. And he's like, what are you talking about? I, I, my analogies are great. And I was like, no, they're not, like folks. To be and he got mad to the point that he ended up in that conversation taking his hat off and hurling it at me, hurling it at me across the you room. You got assaulted by the probes? He took off his little cowboy hat that he had oh, and wow. flung it at me. You in really anger. made him. I've yeah. never seen him do it. Jeff always keeps his cool unless someone like, Jeff always like, keeps his cool? Yeah, for the most part, unless someone doesn't give him a good answer at tribal council oh, or like someone's kind of being evasive to a question or yeah. like giving him some sort of canned. No, I like, understand that. I can be temperamental too. I get, I get that. I relate to that. But yeah, um, yeah he, he can be fun to rile up. <laughs> I can see the dynamic between you two. Now I understand yeah, yeah. that father son. You know, so bond, he wrote yeah. me. He wrote me a note. You saw at the live show. I know. I'm when dying we met, to know what's in the note. Me too. We, when we met in casting, he wrote me another note. When he first met me, he he took his little sheet of paper that he has in casting, where he's scribbling notes, yeah. and he tore off a little piece of it and wrote, "Spencer, you will not win." Probst. Oh <laughs> and he God. and he gave wow. that to me, and he's like, "Spencer, I want you to look at this when you're at Ponderosa and you've lost." And I'm like, "Okay, Probst." And Wait. I and I put it on my fridge, and I use it as like motivation. I'm like, I'm gonna prove that guy wrong. Oh, maybe and that's what he was trying to yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. Well, now yeah. I have the letter, so I can put that on the fridge and put the letter next to it, so it's a good contrast. This is a really, this is like a trophy fridge you're working oh, with. Oh yeah, now. I got two things written to me by Probst. As a super fan, like I'm that's so huge. lucky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, how amazing was it? Let's get to the family because. You probably didn't think the family was going to come. No, we thought it wasn't, and Probst played it so well. There was a challenge where beforehand we were like, why didn't you do family this year? And he was like, uh, I don't know, man. You know, I love the family. It wasn't my call. And he played really it really well. Guys, huh? we, we were absolutely convinced there was no family. And then your sister shows and up, and you're, <laughs> why, why your sister? My sister, I thought, would really appreciate the experience. Okay. Um, and you know, we, we had an interesting childhood. We, we fought sometimes. And I thought it would be a really good way that we could connect you know, with this you know, the experience that uh, I, I wanted that more with her than anyone else. Well, it looked like she was your biggest supporter out yeah. there, too. Yeah, she was awesome. She I was love really my sister. For you. She, we're so different. We're like polar opposites, but I love my sister, and she was a huge cheerleader. So you wanted to build a bridge to have a deeper relationship with your sister. Yeah. That's really sweet. I, when yeah. I brought my dad out, it was so selfish. <laughs> I was like, I want my dad because I'm going to be crying. Yeah, if I had been <laughs> selfish, maybe I could have chosen a different shoulder to cry on. But yeah, yeah I, I really wanted to have that experience with Taryn. Well, it was really fun watching you play. Thanks. I know the fans really loved you. Everyone was so sad. There's a, There are a lot of broken hearts out there tonight. I'm sure you've gotten many marriage proposals on Twitter right now. <laughs> How many have you gotten? Uh, not as many as LJ, but LJ probably, <laughs> probably lot, so. Huh? Yeah, I, I guess so. He's um, really got something that the ladies like. Yeah, and you had my back too, asking Jatia if I'm single, so. Well, Jatia has a little crush on you. Uh, okay. And Wu. <laughs> Jatia's awesome. You know, we, as much as we didn't get along on the island, I love Jatia. We're good friends. Good. Yeah. So your friends, are you friends with everybody now? Have you... Yeah, pretty Didn't much. Didn't seem like anyone really had any anything no, against you. No, we n not really too much bad blood in this cast. Yeah. Um, it was an awesome season. We're all so thrilled to be a part of a season like this, and I made some really good friends. Good. Yeah. And you're glad it's over, or what? You want to go back? <laughs> I would love to go back. From yeah. blood versus water. With you your learn, sister. like I always say, you learn a line from a win, and you learn a book from a loss. And with as many mistakes as I made, I should have learned like 10 books. So are we going to have the Spencer book of failure? I'll write it. I'm working on it now. It'll be, you have the BR rules and you have the Spencer book of failure. Perfect. It's a good contrast. Good. We'll have to look out for that. I'm sure all the fans yep. will be waiting with bated breath for 9 that 999. Look out for it. Are you going to, are you going to photocopy Jeff's letter, put it in the book and really give us something to look sure. forward to? Sure. So yeah. we get it personalized. Absolutely. And then, and then sign it like Philip Shepard does and really. Really do your fans a solid. He gave me a nickname last night. What was it? I am the Survivor Shogun. 
I like it. Yeah. I'll take that. He's a, he's exactly what I expected him to be like. <laughs> All right, Spencer. It's been so fun talking with you. Congratulations awesome on you. a huge season. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are going to say goodbye to the Survivor Shogun, and we will see you next season. That's it. Bye. Bye.